first public notice that was ever made of Shakespeare was from a grub street writer, Robert Greene, who called him an upstart crow, beautified with our feathers. In the book, in the book, yeah, under that title on the board. Is the beautified feather thing because Greene knew that Shakespeare was the Earl of Oxford? Absolutely not. <laughs> not even close. I, the Earl of Oxford published poetry, OK? And it wasn't any good. I mean, had Oxford been able to get a play put on, he would have broken a leg to do it. I mean, can you think of any human being that would, for any reason, not put his name on Hamlet? The Oxfordian thing, the anti-Stratfordian thing, what pisses people off about Shakespeare? What lies behind every controversy about Shakespeare is rage. Rage over the nature and unequal distribution of talent. Rage that genius appears where it appears for no material reason at all. Desiring a thing cannot make you have it. Now the trouble with writing, if I may bring it up here in the English department, as we all do a little of it from time to time, writing. And some of us start to think delusionally, maybe with a little time, a little peace, a little money in the bank, and you get that room of your own, you think, well, shit, I might be a writer too. I mean, we accept genius in sports as something we cannot do, but it's no more likely that you could be a writer that you could be, what, an Olympic pole vaulter? Because what you have to be before you try to be a pole vaulter, hello? It's a pole vaulter, no? Yeah. You are one. A pole vaulter? A novelist. No, I am not. For me to be a novelist, I would have to make a deal with myself that it was OK being a mediocrity in a profession that died commercially in the last century. All right, people do that. I am not one of them. If you take away nothing else from my class, from this experience, let it be this. If you're not a genius, don't bother. All right? The world needs plenty of electricians, and a lot of them are happy. I'll be fucked if I'll be a mid-list novelist getting good reviews from the people I give good reviews to. <laughs> Let's have a look at Dexter. Dexter! An ordinary looking young man with a what? Size 40 jacket, regular features, and decent dentition is the second ranked collegiate tennis player in the United States of America. How'd that come about, Dexter? You come from a tennis family? I mean, uh, I started playing five years ago in high school because the tennis guys have the best weed. <laughs> After you started tennis, how long was it before you were better than everybody? Before I was better than everybody or before I knew it? What happened when you noticed you were naturally better than everybody? I got interested in the game. That is an IQ breakpoint, brother. Right there. Do you remember Machiavelli? That would have been in September. I can remember September. All right. Is it the game, brother? Or the money? Huh? Where to a fama? Fame or virtue? What are you after? Don't go modest on me. What do you want? Both. You got ambitious, yeah? I, I realized as I learned about the game that I was in reach of. In reach of? In reach of. Highest level? Highest level, yeah. Highest level. But it's still a gamble, isn't it? Look, I'm a literature teacher. I can't write well to bother, or I just don't bother. Whichever. Whichever it is, there'd be no apotheosis around here. There'd be no white puto deus feel around here. That's what the Emperor Vespasian said on his deathbed. Dear me, I think I'm becoming a god. But do you know who does write at the highest level? When most of us, and even I, even I write barely adequately. Do you know who it is? In this room, who is it? Don't give me that look. No, 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 no. It isn't the one who talks the most. You're an NPR host tops, okay? <laughs> the literary person in here is Miss Phillips. She's the least obstreperous in this room quietest, and the only one who can have a real career at letters. Some of you 
can have one perceptually. Only she can have one in reality. She is better at writing than our U.S. presently amateur number two is at tennis. Yet she chooses to hide or just blend in with the rest of you. Why? Why is that, Miss Phillips? Being in the middle is the safest place to be. Where do you come from? Ohio. Ohio. Parents are geniuses by any chance, filthy rich? No. Well, your dad wasn't the Earl of Oxford, was he? No. No? How old were you when you read? I was two. Two? Well, that's early. That's prodigious. Any advantages, literary home life? Who's your father? Well, he worked in a factory. Well, your mother? What was? She was an alcoholic. She was insane. But wasn't your dad? I don't see how this is pertinent. No money, no advantages, no peer in the realm. You're not the Earl of Oxford, are you? No? So why are you better than the rest of us? No, you look at me. You are better than the rest of us. If no one told you yet you're a genius and an artist, let me be the first. Okay, I don't know if you can say that. Because I think it's subjective, man. I mean, we all have something to offer. Bullshit. Genius is magical, not material. If you don't have the magic, no amount of wishing will make it so. Miss Phillips, if you plan to continue to come to my class, you sit in the front where you belong, but don't bother showing up. Have a nice day.